This video demonstrates how Chasm decides how to split the hardware resources up between user sessions and how you can control these decisions. First, let's examine the Agents tab of the Admin panel in Chasm Workspaces. An agent is a compute resource that has a Chasm agent installed. If you have a single server deployment, then you would only have a single agent, and that agent is also serving the database, the web server, and the API services. In a distributed deployment, you would have a separate database, web API, and agent servers. In a cloud deployment, the agents would be auto-scaled by Chasm. We will have a video that covers cloud auto-scaling specifically, so for this video, we will assume your agents are fixed resources. Looking at an agent, you will see that the agent reports how many CPU cores, GPUs, and memory that it has available. Now let's look at the image settings for the default Chrome image. Here we can see that the image is set for 2 cores and 2.7 GB of RAM by default. This is a rather small limit and should be adjusted to meet your requirements. The default resource allocation logic for Chasm is to merely reduce 2 cores and 2.7 GB of RAM from the agents that the user session gets assigned to. Going back to the same agent, we can see that it has 2 cores and roughly 4 gigs of RAM. When a user creates a Chrome session and it gets assigned to this agent, the agent will have zero cores and roughly one gig of RAM left to allocate to other sessions. This logic may be fine for default settings. However, if you have a large agent with plenty of RAM and CPU power, it is unlikely that all users would be using 100% of their allocated cores at the same time. The Agent Override setting allows you to manually set the CPUs, GPUs, and RAM the agent is considered to have. A setting of zero means to use the physical CPU, RAM, or GPUs reported by the agent. Generally speaking, a good place to start would be to double the actual core count. However, you really need to adjust this to meet your specific use case. If you're using Chasm for game streaming, for example, it wouldn't be a good idea to override the cores. For general remote work use cases, many of your users will be idle or scrolling through a web page, for example, and thus you have a lot more freedom to override the CPU settings. Memory is generally not safe to be overridden unless you are providing your images with plenty of RAM and users rarely reach that limit. It is extremely important that you provide your agent system with a swap file or partition. Without a swap, when a user's session goes over the allocated RAM, processes will get terminated in the session. A swap file or partition uses the disk when the allocated RAM is exceeded in the user's session. This will decrease performance, but it will ensure that the user's applications do not crash. If you wish to override RAM, it's a good idea to monitor your agent during normal use throughout a period of at least a week. Use the dashboard statistics to see how much RAM is actually being used in real use. Increase the RAM override slowly so that more sessions can be allocated to the agent. Monitor the dashboard to ensure your agent's actual RAM usage never exceeds a safe threshold, such as 90%. Let's demonstrate the resource allocation by creating a session. If we go back and look at the agent, we'll be able to see how much resources are being used. The agents view shows what resources have been allocated versus what resources are actually being used on the agent. Here you can see that 100% of the cores have been allocated, but only 9% of the cores are actually being used at the moment. Likewise with memory, 73% of the memory has been allocated, but only 45% is being used at the moment. With the physical resources our agent has, it could only allocate one session with default settings. Let's override things so that it can handle two sessions. First, I'm going to copy the physical RAM because it's in bytes and it's a very long number. I'll paste that value into the memory override setting and then adjust it so that there's enough RAM to handle two sessions. Then I'll override the core count to four. I should now be able to create a second session.
You can see that the agent is now quite busy because it has two sessions assigned to it. Each session has two cores allocated, while the agent only has two physical cores. If I try to create another session, I'll get an error message indicating that there are no more resources available. To add more resources, you'll need to add more agents to your deployment or further increase the override settings. As you can see, overriding resource settings can help you to achieve more capacity with limited resources. However, it takes time to tune your environment to meet your use case. Overriding too far could lead to a poor user experience. It's important to take your time and plan out resources of your deployment.